Hi there, my name is Dave. My online name is Dave Make Stuff, and I make a lot of things with NTOP, also known as NTopology. And I wanted to make this tutorial to introduce you to my simple seashell generator that's done entirely within NTOP. It's one of my recent designs, and I've had a lot of questions about it, how it's designed, so I thought this would be a good place to start making some tutorials, tutorials about how I, uh, how I do design work in N-topology. Anything that I show you here, the entire file will be posted in the NTOP ed community for those of you that have access. If you just want to download the, a few of the seashells made with this and some of my other designs, you can find those all on Thangs, and the link Links for those are below. If you're not familiar with Antopology, I encourage you to take a look at their website, antop.com. It's uh, Antop is quite an advanced uh, engineering application. You can see used for all sorts of things from thermal management, light weighting, architected materials, things like that. Uh, one of my goals though is to really show how it can be used for artistic applications, uh, creative applications. And uh, those are the sorts of things that I really like to do. So this is a really fun project. Let's just hide the title here and hide that shell. I'm going to pull up this full curve because that's what I'll have on the screen while I'm going through the rest of the of the program here. So you can see that this is a spiral. It's a logarithmic spiral. and one of the beautiful things about seashells is all of the dimensions uh, are, um, are related to this logarithmic spiral. So it's a really fun one to play with. And um, and then putting it in this uh, in this algorithm, in this block, you can uh, iterate the different variables and change that and make different uh, different seashell, seashell shapes. So let me just go through the input variables here first. Uh, the number of spirals is exactly what it says, just the number of revolutions there. The point count. So for those familiar with um, with NTOP, the uh, the curves are formed uh, from points. So the points came first, and uh, and then the curve uh, is applied onto it. So that's the number of reference points it used to make the the curve and drive the equations here. There's a few variables that uh, determine some of the uh, the shape of the spiral. So there's an x y scale uh, variable, a, y, a z scale variable, and then two variables that determine or uh, affect the tightness of the curve. So the x y tightness and the z tightness. And then there's a few variables that determine the dimensions of the final shell. So the start diameter, which is the diameter of the shell up near the top, and then the end diameter, which is the uh, um, the diameter of the aperture, is the hole at the bottom, and the apex is the hole at, or the, the part of the top of the shell, and the shell thickness, of course, there, and a few other uh, design options here for ridges, and, um, and then this points to trim is something we'll talk about a little bit later. So before we get into uh, into how this all works, I just wanted to uh, show you where it started here. And a word of caution, I'm a bit of a math hack, so I, I don't have a lot of formal training in math. I just know enough to get by and get things done. So if uh, if anything I say is, is, uh, is incorrect or if I misspeak, please feel free to leave comments below and we can all learn from that. But good old uh, Wikipedia here tells me the equations for the log logarithmic spiral polar equations. Uh, I'm looking for the Cartesian coordinates uh, equation here. So I need an, an X value and a Y value. And there's the equations right there that you can read more about uh, should you choose. So going down to uh, the first part of the equation. So the first, the first um, important piece here is the input values that go into this equation. And so this is a range of values um, and the, uh, it's, it's uh, determined by the, the number of the point count here. So, so here I've created, I've used a sequence from bounds block uh, to create a, a range of 100 values and uh, the start is at zero. If the end was at two pi, so this is in radians, if the end was two pi that would, uh, that would drive the equation to make one spiral. 
uh, now I have multiple spirals here too, so I've simply times it by uh, multiplied it by the number of spirals here. So this is a uh, this gives us a sequence of input values from zero to um, two times pi times the number of spirals that we want. So so that's uh, that's how we get our hundred points, and then that theta value is used to drive the uh, the um, creation of the x, y, and z. Uh, uh, components of the points, uh, again, just using the math blocks within N topology. And if you're interested in how that actually works, you can you can take a look at the program, download the program, and see how I've I've created those uh, those equations, uh, inputting the theta value uh, there that again drives the equation, and then here's the constants that were in the in the equation as well, the the tight values for tightness and the values for scale. So that's the uh, that's what drives everything, and uh, and it's just uh, so elegant to do in uh, to do in N topology. So moving on here, yeah, you'll, so you'll see here uh, this entire part uh, section where I'm constructing the shell. Uh, you can see full points and trim points, uh, full curved, trimmed, a full and trimmed version of everything, and that is because at the uh, in order to make the hollow shell, we have a, uh, a trimmed version of the spiral, so it's slightly shorter. This end, uh, the end of the spiral here doesn't come fully to the end, it's been trimmed. And here is the full curve. And then, of course, from, from that, uh, I do a, a Boolean operation, and that's how, we get the, that's how we get the hollowed curve. So it's just important to know that because because up here, this points to trim is the difference in length between this full curve and the trimmed curve. So if you look at the end here, if I show you only the trimmed curve, you can see that it's pulled back two points. So that's this is going to be the shape of the final shell. The full curve is, is going to give us that inner uh, slice shell that is then removed uh, using the Boolean operation. Just because if it's important to know that because uh, with 100 points, this uh, this difference between the full curve and the trim curve is is enough to uh, to fully trim it back and expose that open aperture hole. But if you if you increase your value of the the point count to say a thousand points, then you're also going to have to increase how many points you trim so that so that that longer spiral uh, will fully cut out the uh, the trimmed spiral and. Uh, for this uh, for this value of 100 points, tr uh, trimming two points works, and that should work for most uh, you know for most of the experiments that you would want to do. So, so here we have the full curve uh, there, and and then uh, in order to do anything with a with a curve, you need to either um, you know change it somehow into to lines and graphs, or the other uh, the other option for a, a simple design like this is to is to change your curve into a full implicit curve. And once it's in an implicit form, then you can you could use things like thickening and fields and things like that uh, in a way that you can't do with just the with just the curves. So so that's changed into there, and then those are, those are really invisible. You can't you can't see them. Um, but that is what is used to drive the the uh, thickening process of these of these uh, curves. So I'll just pull up the the curves there again. And the thickening process of the curves here uses a ramp. And that ramp is uh, is driven by a little sphere that appears at the top there. And let's just look at the trimmed curve here. So for the trimmed curve, you can see that I've used the uh, I've started the scalar fields with a sphere at the top, and then starting at the uh, so right up there the thickness will be will be um, sorry the the effect starts at the surface of the implicit body which is at zero, and then it goes out to uh, so the in the in max is actually a point, uh, if I show you the field here, it's actually a point um, near the end of the curve. And that's, that's, that's controlled algorithmically. Um, uh, so no matter, no matter what shape you do your, your curve with in this program, 
that that field uh, will always will always coordinate with the length of your of your spiral and do the thickening in the proper way. Uh, and then the out min and the out max. Uh, there's your start diameter and your end diameter, which are of course inputs up here. Your start diameter in this case is one millimeter, and the output uh, end diameter is 26. So that gives us the the full curve, which uh, as you can see is uh, if you look a little closer at the details in this ramp here is is made a little bit uh, it's not as thick it's it's uh, it's thinner uh, affecting uh, according to the shell thickness that you've set up and then the the uh, trim curve goes uh, is thicker. You can see, uh, as mentioned before, that there's this little, uh, the full curve sticks out at the bottom so that when you do the final uh, Boolean operation, you get a nice shell like that. So way back at the beginning here, I mentioned that there's this this uh, option here for, for smoothing, uh, for creating ridges. And that's, uh, I actually found that after the fact, almost by accident, it uh, it comes right here. So this is the uh, there's a value for for um, uh, deciding the tolerance how well your implicit curve maps onto the uh, to the standard curve, and and that's uh, where I've put this value of or the variable of of ridges. So if you if you have that, I'm going to change that to 0.01. So if I change that value to 0 0.01, that implicit curve is mapping very accurately onto the onto the curve, and you can see you don't get any of the uh, any of the ridges. If I increase that value so that there's a really high tolerance, so essentially that implicit curve is not mapping onto the original curve accurately at all. Um, usually that may not be something that you'd want, but in this case it results in these in these nice little nice little ridges. Uh, now, just a just a point to uh, to add here is that this is a simple seashell generator, and I do have a uh, a more complex seashell generator that allows more control over the textures, the ridges, um, the bumps that form along the side here, and then it also allows you to have uh, different shapes for the aperture. So with this simple seashell generator, you're restricted to just a circular aperture, um, but there is a way to make uh, you know, elongated and different uh, different shaped apertures there, and that uh, creates some really interesting shells. So perhaps I will do a, a tutorial for that at some point. Uh, but right now we're going to focus on this one, and I'm going to hide that, close things up a little bit here. I'm going to keep the full curve on, and let's play with some of these values. And uh, I let me just hide this uh, this little sphere here clean things up. I wanted to play with these values because it's, uh, there's, uh, you know, unless you're a genius and you know how uh, in intuitively how logarithmic equations work, it's basically trial and error with this. And uh, and entering these values can, can create really unpredictable responses in the curve uh, just because of the, uh, of the equation and, and because I don't really understand what's going on. But uh, let's, let's, uh, so this is a, this is a short, a shorter spiral here. It's got, um, or sh sorry, a shorter shell. It's got, it's got six spirals. Uh, there is a way. Um, let's make a longer, let's make a longer one. So, let's increase this. I want a, a shell that's going to have ten spirals. So you'll watch it go through and, um, and it will generate ten spirals. Now that's actually really big. If I, if I pull up my title again, uh, this, uh, the width of this is a hundred millimeters. So I've, I've gone from a fairly small shell uh, of about 30 millimeters in height to, uh, to something that's quite long and um, and probably too long to be to be printing out so let's just go down and change some of these variables here and again some of them are really sensitive so let's change the XY scale to 0.6 so that uh, that um, makes it a little bit smaller on the X on the oh sorry actually let's change that that's too that's still too um, Okay, that's what we wanted there. So changing the XY scale to 0.2, you can see how that made it really narrow. It's still quite long. So let's change the 
let's change the Z scale down to something a little more reasonable there. And uh, so now we've got it. Now we've got a shape that's a little bit, uh, you know, you can see it's about 100 millimeters uh, in length. There. So it's it's definitely longer. And um, let's just take a look at it here and just see what it looks like. So we're just, I haven't changed I haven't changed any of the the shell dimensions, the diameter or the thickness. Uh, and so you can see you get something that's not. Uh, it's got holes in it. Um, things aren't quite uh, connecting. Connecting up here, the shell's got some, uh, just doesn't look quite right. Uh, just a quick word about the tightness here. So for these two demonstrations that I'm doing, we're going to just leave the tightness uh, at 0 0.06. And uh, uh, those you can play around with too, and it, it, uh, you'll see how it affects. I'll, I'll do a demonstration in a, in a minute here. But in order to get this long shell looking reasonable here, I'm going to change these variables. So the start diameter, which is at the at the apex there, I'm going to change that to two. You can see that run through. Changes things a little bit. It's a little bit nicer up at the top there. But that bottom that bottom uh, aperture diameter has to really increase. I'm going to increase that right up to 50. And let's see how that runs through. So the shell itself is starting to look nice, but I still got some holes in it which really just means that I need to change this thickness a little bit. Let's change that to five and then see how that looks. So there we go. And I'll put the uh, the title up just for for reference there. So there's a longer there's a longer spiraled shell there um, that again has all those nice uh, the nice inside the nice inside geometry. I can do a cut there and you can see there's the spiral on the inside. I'll erase that for just a second so you can see the uh, the inner geometry like that. So that's a lot of fun. So let's try uh, a real change here. Uh, in, uh, so these are actually, these shells are called uh, turretellid shells. It's a, it's a, um, a seashell. Uh, but snails have shells too, that gastropods they're called. And uh, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can make one up uh, that would uh, look like a snail shell. So let me go down here and pull up our full curve again. So I've changed the number of spirals down to three because snail shells don't have as many spirals. But this uh, x y scale, those three spirals, I'm going to I'm going to ramp them right up. And the so you can see what I've done here. I've cha I've put the z scale at zero. So all those hundred points, they're not distributing at all along the z axis. So I'm just getting a uh, a logarithmic spiral on the x y on the x y plane. And for this one, though, I am going to play around with these uh, this XY tightness. Uh, so I'm going to increase that. And these set, these values are very sensitive. So it takes very little change to get a uh, quite a big result. So you can see that's starting to look a little bit more like a, a snail shell now. And the Z tightness is going to stay the same. Let's just, for curiosity, run that through and see what it looks like as a shell. So you can see how it looks different. Uh, it's oriented sort of flat, uh, but it doesn't look quite right just yet. The uh, the parts of the shell aren't aren't um, aren't touching there. So I'm going to increase the start diameter up to five, and I think we'll leave that end diameter at 50 still. And that's looking pretty good. So there we've got a gastropod shell, and again, if you if you didn't like those ridges, you could you could smooth out the way that that curve is generated, and get yourself a nice smooth shell. I happen to like those ridges. I think it adds a neat texture to it, and it's really neat to see it 3D printed out. So we'll have that now. Uh, if you look closely at a snail shell, it it isn't actually perfectly symmetrical like that. It there is actually a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of height in the spiral in the z-axis so 
So about that much right there. And there you can see, there you can see how that uh, flat on one side and, uh, and sort of curved inward on the other side. I'm just gonna put this back to zero for a moment because I just wanna generate it nice and flat and then and then just give a chance to take a look at some of the inside the inside geometry in there which again is uh is really nice when you're when you're doing this in in ntop you, you really are designing the the whole model uh all the little bits and pieces of the geometry and uh and it's not just a, a surface sculpt so that's what i really like about uh about designing stuff in in NTOP. So that is my, my uh, simple seashell generator. I hope you enjoy it. Like I mentioned before, you can, you'll be able to download that, the whole file that I just did and uh, maybe, maybe follow along with it as you're, as you're listening to me ramble on and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, if you don't want to do that, the files for some of the for the the two seashells that I showed you here, the short and the long one, uh, you can just download the STLs from my Thangs site and uh, stay tuned. And I will uh, I will do another one later on about my more advanced seashell generator that allows for changes in the aperture size and uh, different textures. And I hope to do a lot more tutorials uh, f uh, related to my work with uh, with NTOP. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to leave any feedback in the bottom and uh, I look forward to doing more.